If you don't already have a vapor project set up, check out this video first. It only goes for a couple of minutes and then once you're done, come straight back to this one. So in the last video, we learned how to set up a server. This time around, I'd like to mess around a little bit with these routes. So real quick, we're just going to take a look at building a word generator. And I'm just going to throw that into the app.get request. Now, I know it's really simple, but we'll expand on this later. Next, I'll add in a middle section. In here, I'm going to take a random one from each list and add them together. I better also specify the correct return type. This result will be our future event loop future and we'll have a view in there. So the reason why we have to do that now and didn't have to before is because the compiler is now having a hard time working out what's being returned in this closure. All right, that looks good to me. Let's build and run. And open up the web browser. Refresh the page. <laughs> I apologize if these are like swear words in another language. Astatology. You know what? I didn't think these were going to work, but they kind of do. Entatable. Entatings. As fors. You know, it's quite boring, but it kind of serves our purpose for demonstrating what can be done. Um, I think this time I'm going to move this over to the hello section and then try and make it so that you can manipulate the outcome a little bit. Uh, and I'll show you how to pull out the information that's coming in through the URL. So let's just move this out to its own function. This input string parameter is going to be a value passed along from the request which I'll show you how to do in a minute. And it's different depending on whether you're doing a get request or a post. And of course, we'll go through post requests later on in the video. Oh, and in case you didn't know, yes, you can have functions inside functions. You can see that this get word function is inside the routes function. Ideally, get word would be in a completely different file, but because this is just a demo, I'm just gonna throw it here so we can see it all together. What I wanna do is specify some kind of route that can accept any input. So at the moment we've hard coded hello, and that means that if we go to anything else like um, like uh, hello, we get a string output of hello world because it's hitting that route. But if we type in hi, it doesn't work. But what we want to do is set it up so that it does work. And we can take that hi input or any other input at the end of the URL and generate something based on that. So this new route will be another get request. And let's call the parameter seed. Seed because we may use it to generate text later on. And I'm gonna return a string. Now this colon in the parameter lets the system know that this is a bit of a wildcard and the seed portion is there so that we have something to reference. And to do that, we just go let seed equals request parameters.get seed. Now I'm force unwrapping this value, don't do that. Then all we need to do is return get word and pass through the seed. And I'm just going to use that value as a prefix to the return string. Now it's time to rebuild and test at the URL path of localhost colon eighty eighty slash hi. You'll get a generated word with the prefix of hi. So if we change it to something else like um, other, the prefix should change to other. And you can see that here. Okay, so now we know how to get those parameters out of the URL and we can do stuff with them. This whole word processing sort of thing is a little bit silly uh, and I think we can move on from this. Now that we know how to read the components of a URL in a get request, it's time to take a look at a post request. Creating a post route is super simple. All you need to do is app.post. We'll set the path to post and the return will be of type string. So a post is a little bit different. It means we can actually push extra information in the request that isn't just part of the URL. What we're gonna do here is pull out some information and we can do that by grabbing the content. The easiest way to go about doing this is probably to create a struct around the type of content you are expecting. And then to get that information out, we just go let content equals request content. And we wanna decode that to our post content. And of course we need to mark this with a try and we will return the content. Of course we need to make this codable. And the content name plus 
the content dot password. Now the good thing about doing it this way is that we now get the type safety of Swift. And as an added extra bonus of building our backend in Vapor is that we can actually reuse this struct inside an iOS app. In fact, if we were to put all these model objects into a separate framework and we can pull that framework into both this Vapor project and our iOS project and keep it maintained separately, it means that both projects will be in sync and we will now have to worry about certain things breaking across the two different platforms. Okay, now that's done. Let's jump over to our terminal. Let's redo this with run. Let's open up, we go to post, hit enter, and it is not hitting the correct endpoint at all. So we've passing through post into the URL and it appears that we are hitting this get request in, instead of this post request. And the reason for that is because your web browser is always going to do these get requests instead. And it's going to get sent through here. And of course, post will be the seed. It will be switched over to the seed. So what we need to do is use a program that can actually do post requests. And my favorite one is called Paw. But there's another one called Postman you can use if you prefer that. I'll change the method from a get to a post. And we're going to hit the post endpoint and I'll do a request. Okay, it looks like we've got unsupported media type and that's kind of the output that we would be expecting. All right, so if I jump back over to here, we got abort 415 unsupported media type. Okay, so what we need to do is also pass through some information. Okay, so you can see down here where we had our post content, it's expecting a name and a password. So what we need to do is pass through some information. So that will be in the body section. We'll make it JSON and I'm going to put in a name, password, and I do a refresh and we get back bow password. So this post, we've grabbed out the content, post content.self, which is decoding into this type. And we are using that directly here, name plus password. And you can see in the output on port, that's exactly what we're getting. Now, what I'll do is I'll leave some links in the description for both Paw, Postman, and whatever other ones that I can find. There's a couple of free ones on the App Store you can download for your Mac, um, and, and they work just fine as well. All you need to do is be able to pass, paste in a URL, specify headers, content, all that sort of stuff, and you can replicate this as well. You don't need something as powerful as Paw to do API development, but it helps. So the entire idea of this series is that we go through each of these steps and introduce you to new things in Vapor bit by bit. Uh, I think next time around, we'll talk about what these event loop futures are and what they actually mean. Uh, for me, when I was starting out, that was super confusing. Um, and then we were actually going to put together a plan for building out this social network. And I think after the next video, I'll have something up where you can visit the website and create an account and log in. So that'd be really, really cool. Until next time.